Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is March 25th, 2020. This is video number 25 of my series called The Mystery of the Beast. And today's video is called Adrenochrome and the Cup of Wrath. You are looking right now at a Twitter page. And um, before we look at this, I want you to know my... Uh, Twitter handle, uh, Glenn Hall at Glenn Allen at G-L-Y-N-A-L-Y-N. -Y -Y uh, if you want to follow me, and um, then I'd be happy to follow you as well. And yesterday I came across this new word here, a Hashtag adrenochrome withdrawal. And you have to look out for your pictures because some of the pictures are not real, but some of them are. And you need to uh, you need to become familiar with this term adrenochrome if you are not, because it's profoundly disturbing, but it is also something essential for understanding where we are in time and in history. Until Donald Trump was elected president, I had never heard of adrenochrome. Never. And then Q began to post in October of 2017, in Donald Trump's first year as president, and Q inspired many people to begin to investigate certain ideas, certain people, certain things, and one of the things that came up was this word adrenochrome. Now, any children who are listening, you should now stop listening, go get your parent, let your parent listen. This, is, this video is not made for children. It's, this is an adult subject and it's very disturbing. Adrenochrome, for those of you who don't know, is blood that has been infused with adrenaline. Wicked, wicked people produce this by terrorizing their victims, often in satanic ritual abuse, which causes their adrenaline to flow into their blood, and then they murder that victim, and then they drink the victim's blood. And that blood is adrenochrome. And it is beyond belief that people do that. And certainly was beyond the ken, the thinking of my imagination that people would do such things even though I had been a Christian for 40 years, knew of wickedness, had no idea of the rampant wickedness that has been controlling our world for 6,000 years. And I didn't know about it until Donald Trump became president. Now, for those of you who have not listened to all my videos, I began this series by stating how I even began to come, come into this revelation of who Donald Trump is in God's prophetic timeline. Before he was elected, there were prophets. Kim Clement, Mark Taylor come to mind especially who were saying that Donald Trump was anointed by God and Mark Taylor would even say things like the Luciferian reign is over. Well, I began to consider if, well, first of all, 
Trump's election was a surprise to me and to everyone. I was exceedingly depressed the day of the election in 2016 and thought for sure Hillary was going to win and expected mass murder of Christians after that. I didn't realize that Hillary's and Obama's evil was as great as it is at that time, but I still expected genocide of Christians. I didn't know that they'd be drinking our blood, though, from it. So anyway, Trump wins, and the prophets are saying this is the end of the Luciferian reign. Well, if that's true, and I believe it is, then that has to be in Scripture. God has to have revealed that. And so I asked God to show me through the Scriptures whether or not this was true. And over a lengthy period of time, of about a year, God did, in fact, reveal to me that this is true, that Donald Trump is the eighth head of the beast, and that as the eighth head of the beast, he is going to destroy Babylon the Great. Who is Babylon the Great? Babylon the Great is who we call the deep state. who Trump called the swamp. I don't yet hear God's people that have a voice to the masses yet recognizing what we are in the midst of, but that will be coming soon. So what we're seeing now is the beginning of the day of wrath. The storm began with this release of COVID-19 and then Donald Trump's response to it. We are in the storm now, and that storm is the day of wrath. I will take you to some scriptures that deal with that. I'm not sure I'll be able to get to them today. I want to take you instead to some scriptures that are dealing with the cup of wrath because right now, what we are seeing is that Babylon the Great is being forced to drink the cup of wrath. First, let's go to the book of Revel Revelation, chapter 17. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Now these are the seven bowls of wrath. Come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality, and with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth have become drunk. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns." The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her, of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus." In the past, before Donald Trump, I would not have thought that these partakers of Babylon the Great were actually drinking the blood of the saints. And by the word the saints, saints is the word holy ones, which is the word kodeshim that I often use. But that's the reality. This woman is drunk with adrenochrome. This woman is drunk with the blood of the people that she has slaughtered 
and satanic ritual sacrifice, often involving sexual acts of perversion. And that's what we see a picture of here in Revelation 17. See, God is making it very clear that his word is true. His word is more true and more accurate than we ever dared to believe. Look at this. The kings of the earth committed sexual immorality with Babylon the Great. Who are the kings of the earth that committed sexual immorality with her? Well, let's name a few. Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, George Bush, George W. Bush, to name just a few. Those are the kings of the earth from our country that committed abominations with Babylon the Great. And God raised up a man to fight that. Now do you understand why he is so hated? Why they have stopped at nothing to destroy Donald Trump? Who would have ever thought that a person could survive over three years with the onslaught against him as Donald Trump has? And now look what they've brought against him. COVID-19. Probably, probably one... Excuse me. Now, an interesting thing here. Look at verse 4. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. This golden cup is the cup of wrath. This golden cup is both the cup that she drank her pleasures from, and her pleasures are now becoming her judgment. The cup of wrath will be forced upon all of the enemies of God. And this is the time that we are now living in. Now let's go on to chapter 18 of Revelation. After this, I saw another angel. After this, see, the book of Revelation is a series of visions that God gives to John in which, in an allegory, he shows John things that are going to come upon the world in the next 2,000 plus years. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he called out with a mighty voice, Fallen, fallen, is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling place for demons a haunt for every unclean spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, a haunt for every unclean and detestable beast. For all nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her sexual immorality, and all and the kings of the earth have committed immorality with her, and the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxurious living. Look how hard it is for truth to prevail. You still have almost 50% of the people in the United States supporting the demonic agenda of the Democrats. How can you explain that? Except that they have drunk of the immorality produced by Babylon the Great. Now, what is that immorality? It's all of the lifestyle of the United States. It's the movies, the music, the strip clubs, the bars, the brothels, all of the lewd shows that go on in New York, Las Vegas, and every other large city of this nation. And examine 
Who usually runs the large cities of the nation? Are they not run by Democrats? Are these cities not haunts of every unclean spirit? Haunts of every unclean bird? Haunts of every clean and, un and detestable beast? Our cities are disgusting places that many fear to go to unless they go to partake of the evil of Babylon the Great. And all nations have drunk of that. All nations were defiled by the evil of Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great is the satanic spirit that has ruled the world since Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. At the time Donald Trump won the presidency, it controlled most aspects of the world. And it's very surprising to see Donald Trump prevail as he has prevailed. It can only be explained by one thing, that God is fighting for him. Because the odds against him were overwhelming. How could he... How could he win every time? How can he continue to win? It's because God fights for him. Now I want to continue reading from Revelation 18 because we need to take this to heart and there's many people, hopefully some, who will hear this, take it to heart. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. The sad reality is that many, many of God's people are still in Babylon the Great. Many of God's people do partake of the sins of Babylon the Great. If you are in her, you partake of her sins. If you remain in her, you will partake of her plagues. You have only one hope, and that hope is to repent of your sins and come out of Babylon the Great. For her sins are heaped high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Pay her back as she herself has paid back others. See, what does she do? The people that are against her, she always prosecutes and put it, puts in prison. Look at the people that have been prosecuted in the attempt to get Donald Trump. So far, we don't hear of any prosecutions beginning against these corrupt members of Babylon the Great, but that's coming because repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double portion for her in the cup she mixed. You see... In the cup she mixed, she's holding this cup full of her abominations, but God is going to mix in her cup now her judgment. As she glorified herself and lived in luxury, so give her a like measure of torment and mourning. Since in her heart she says, I sit as a queen, I am no widow, and mourning I shall never see. Babylon the Great likes to think of herself as the God of this earth. She likes to think of herself in terms that Satan used when he rebelled against the Most High. People who have become great within Babylon the Great, like Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, believed that they were great and untouchable. And now you can begin to sense the fear that is coming upon the people that are about to be judged. The time is at hand. It is happening now. For this reason, her plagues will come in a single day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be burned up with fire, for mighty is the Lord God who has judged her. And the kings of the earth who committed sexual immorality and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. 
They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city, Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her, since no one buys their cargo anymore. Wow, what's happening right now? We've never seen in our lifetime the stock market do what it's doing today. We've never seen the closure of the economy as we're seeing right now. How long can this go on? How long can our government, for example, bail out those who are being hurt by this? The merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her since no one buys their cargo anymore. Cargo of gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, all kinds of scented wood, all kinds of articles of ivory, all kinds of articles of costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses and chariots and slaves, that is, human souls or the souls of men. Yes, Babylon the Great is a slave trader. The hypocrites who rule Babylon the Great, the Democrats in particular, are slave traders. And yet they always accuse Donald Trump of being racist. But they're the ones who deal in the trading of human souls. They're the ones who kidnap and traffic children for sexual pleasures and for adrenochrome. They're the ones who put human beings into bondage, who make them work for little to nothing, who actually create slaves. Babylon, the fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you, and all your delicacies and your splendors are lost to you, never to be found again. Never to be found again. So, Twitter, adrenochrome withdrawal, celebrities who partook of these evil things, never to be found again. The fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you, and all your delicacies and your splendors are lost to you, never to be found again. The merchants of these wares who gained wealth from her will stand far off in fear of her torment, weeping and mourning aloud, alas, alas, for the great city that was clothed in fine linen, in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels and with pearls. For in a single hour, all this wealth has been laid waste. And all shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors and all whose trade is on the sea stood far off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning. What city was like the great city? The great city. Alas, alas, for the great city. What city was like the great city? 19. Alas, alas, for the great city. Who is the great city? In scripture, you have two cities. What city is the angel speaking of here? Obviously, Babylon the Great, but other cities. Jerusalem, old Jerusalem, was a great city. Nineveh, Damascus, Babylon. All of the great city, New York, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Mexico City, Tokyo, Paris, London, what city is like the great city? All of these great cities are part of Babylon the Great. 
You can go to all of these great cities and partake of all of the sins that Babylon the Great partook of. And a lot of people, a lot of our people, some of you I speak to, you go to these great cities to partake of the sins of Babylon the Great. But did you know how great those sins were? Did you know at what cost those sins came? Did you know there were children being sacrificed to Satan and then being eaten? Their blood being drunk in order to get high on adrenochrome? Did you know that? Are you ready to repent? Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and her plagues. And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas, for the great city where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth. For in a single hour she has been laid waste. But rejoice over her, O heaven, and you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you Kodeshim and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. Rejoice, rejoice, people of God, and do not fear, because now is the time of your salvation. Jesus is not coming again a second time to deal with sin, but he's coming now to save those who have waited patiently for him. Rejoice over her, O heaven, for you saints, you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea. Why like a great millstone? Because someone who hurts one of these little ones, it is better for them to be thrown into the sea with a great millstone around their neck. Saying, so will Babylon the great city be thrown down with violence and will be found no more. And the sound of harpists and musicians of flute players and trumpeters will be heard in you no more. And a craftsman of any craft will be found in you no more. And the sound of the mill will be heard in you no more. And the light of a lamp will shine in you no more. And the voice of a bridegroom and bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants were the great ones of the earth, and all nations were deceived by your sorcery. All nations were deceived by your sorcery, O wicked, satanic, perverted Babylon the Great. Those who have ruled us are evil and ruled by their sorcery. And in her, in Babylon the Great, was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who have been slain on the earth. Do you realize how huge and how profound that statement is? In her, in Babylon the Great, was found the blood of prophets and of Kodeshim and of all who have been slain on the earth, all who have been slain on the earth. Babylon the Great is the murderer. Babylon the Great is the satanic principle that has ruled the world for 6,000 years, and that principle is coming to an end. Now, it's important here to understand our Bible, our scriptures, because Jesus pronounced a very similar word to the Pharisees in, I believe it was Matthew 22, 23, I think, but I'm going to put in 22 or 23. Yeah, 23. Okay. So Jesus, you know, people have such a misconception of Jesus that he's such a, a mild, puny wimp who, who doesn't stand up to power. Oh, really? Well, then, let, then read chapter 23 of Matthew. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. For you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would enter 
to go in. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you travel across the sea and land to make a single proselyte, and when he becomes a proselyte, you make him twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. How true is this also of many missionaries who have gone across? Woe to you, blind guides, who say so on and so on. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe, mint, and, and dill, and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, like justice and mercy and truth, faithfulness, truth. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside there are full of greed and self-indulgence, you blind Pharisee. Who comes to your mind when you think of this? I'll tell you who comes to my mind. And he happens to be a Jew, Chuck Schumer. What a hypocrite. What a hypocrite. But it's not limited to the many Jews who became great in movies, great in banking. No, it's not limited to just the Jews. It's limited. It, it's the whole world. It's all of us. It's both the Jews and Ephraim. Ephraim. Scripturally, Ephraim represents the church prophetically. The church has become as defiled as some of these Jews that some people in the church regularly talk about. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and hypocrites. Thirty-two. Fill up then the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you brood of vipers. How are you to escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore I send you prophets and wise men and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and persecute from town to town, so that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I say to you, all things will come upon this generation. Well, did you catch that? Upon these Pharisees, scribes and Pharisees, the lawyers. I am a lawyer and I've known a lot of hypocritical lawyers. Upon you, scribes and Pharisees, may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah. All the righteous blood shed on the earth. Well, isn't that interesting? That's exactly what we read here. In her, in Babylon the Great, was found the blood of prophets and of Kodeshim and of all who have been slain on the earth. What did Jesus do here? He identified the scribes and the Pharisees with Babylon the Great. Today, I identify today's scribes and Pharisees, the lawmakers, the hypocrite lawmakers, the hypocrite lawyers, Pharisees, the hypocrite religious leaders, both Christian, Catholic, Jewish, Muslim. All of you are in the same, all of you hypocrites are in the same boat. I don't care what religion you are. I don't care what you say your faith is. But if you act in the abominable ways that Jesus describes to the Pharisees, to the scribes and the Pharisees, and in the way that John reveals in the book of Revelation, then you are part of Babylon the Great. God is merciful. God is just. Even at this late hour, even at this late hour, he says, come out of her. Revelation 
Revelation 18, 4, Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you take part in her sins, lest you share in her plagues. People, it's time for your spiritual eyes to open. It's inconceivable to me that any of you could call yourself a Democrat. Or that any of you could be a rhino, Republican in name only, that always sides with the Democrats and with the evil agenda of Babylon the Great. It is beyond my imagination that any of you who actually have any compassion in your heart could remain within such a filthy, abominable entity as this satanic entity that the Bible calls Babylon the Great. We are now seeing the judgment of God coming upon Babylon the Great. You will be judged if you remain within that spiritual entity now that you see what it is. With knowledge comes responsibility. And now is the time to come out of her. I don't know how much time remains. But the angel says that this judgment comes quickly. In a day. In an hour. It comes very quickly. Now some people may read this destruction of Babylon in Revelation 18 and say, wow, nothing's left after, I mean, not even any weddings anymore and nothing that is worth having. No craftsmen, harpists, no music. Well, they will not be found in Babylon the Great again. The good things that God has created are now to be found in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is now arising. The mountain of the Lord of hosts is now arising and is becoming the highest mountain on the earth. It's time for you to come and become part of that mountain part of that kingdom because in the Lord Jesus there is forgiveness of sin there is mercy there is truth but you cannot cling to what you have always held on to you cannot bring your sin into the kingdom that's why in Revelation chapters 21 and 22 you still see evil people outside of New Jerusalem because they cannot come in. You can never bring in your sin into the kingdom. And that's why, once again, God is going to raise up prophets and judges who will be able to judge sin immediately so that no deceiving entity can come into the house of God, into the kingdom of God, into the community of God. God will have a clean house. The unclean will remain outside. 